Well, good morning, everybody. People have been asking me about a lot of the things that I do, and I figured today I'll just give you a quick, simple, easy recipe for some of the best brownies you've ever had. Now, the first thing we need to do is get the chocolate in the brown. What that's going to require is a double boiler. Very simple makeup. Just take a pan as such, fill it with about an inch of water. You don't want the water to come up to the bottom of the pot in which you're going to uh, be melting your chocolate. It'll cause your chocolate to steam. You don't want any water or steam getting into the chocolate. It's, it's going to cause a problem. That's the hardest part of this whole scenario. Now, in the bowl, we place one stick of butter, and we place four squares of unsweetened baking chocolate. It's important to use unsweetened. That way you can control how much sugar you put into the brown. So now we have that. We place it on the stove. Get the turn burner on the medium high. Get the water to start boiling. As it steams up, it'll melt your butter and your chocolate. You'll stir them together. We'll get back to that in a minute. In a separate bowl, what we want to do is we want to combine two cups of sugar one two and four eggs. Well, mix these thoroughly. Now, two cups of sugar, a little too sweet for you. You can absolutely lessen that a little. I found two cups to be exactly the right amount. And I haven't had any complaints about the brownies yet. So we get this all mixed quite thoroughly. Sugar starts to dissolve, and it looks like a nice, bright yellow, almost like a custard. As you can see, right there. Now, we're going to wait for a minute. we got to wait for the chocolate to finish, because that's the next step. So you can let this set aside. The important part in melting this chocolate is to make sure that you stir it rather regularly as it starts, as the steam starts to rise and it melts. That way it'll melt consistently and none of your chocolate will burn to the bottom of your bowl, which it shouldn't in the first place, but stirring is definitely an important part to prevent any of that. If you have the heat a little too high, the steam gets a little too much, not a problem. As long as you're stirring. Now, as you can see, here's how your chocolate should be looking as it's melting along. Continue to stir it. Those blocks will take a few minutes to uh, to melt down. But make sure you keep the steam and water from getting into your chocolate. As I said, that's 
you know, the hardest part of this whole recipe. So when the chocolate is finished, it should be nice and smooth like this. There should be no lumps at all. It should be completely melted so that you basically just have a nice, smooth chocolate. I wouldn't try tasting it at this point. Again, remember, we're working with unsweetened chocolate. What we're going to do, and many recipes will tell you to let this all cool down. I've never had a problem with just working with it straight away. We're going to add this to our egg and sugar mixture. Get a nice flat sided spatula so that you can scrape every bit of chocolate out of there. And what we're going to do is just mix that in there and make sure it gets mixed in thorough. No streaks of yellow at all. Make sure it's completely mixed. Scrape off the sides of the bowl. Make sure you get all the sugar down in there. Make sure it's mixed thoroughly. You can use an electric beater for this. I happen to have broken mine recently and haven't bought another one. I'm just as happy to do it by hand. Now, the last ingredient we're going to need here is some flour. One cup of flour. I don't bother to sift this because I mix it really well. Sifting will add a lot of air to your flour, make things light and fluffy. I'm looking for a thick, fudgy brownie in any event. So we add in the flour, mix it, be careful you don't want to splash flour everywhere, as I'm kind of doing. Keep your spatula around because you're going to want it to scrape all of this out and get it into the pan. You're also probably going to want it to scrape some of the flour down off the sides. Like such. And get it mixed very thoroughly. So that all the lumps are out. And nice and thick, good and smooth. Scrape along the bottom of the bowl in case there's any flour left on down there. It didn't get mixed in. And you should have a nice, thick, gooey, fudgy brownie mix. Wash any chocolate you have up off your hand so that when you're making your own video, you can lift your own camera up. But this is what it should look like. Now, what we need is a pan to put it into. So we're going to get us a 9 by 13. I found this to be exactly the right size for this measurement of brownie. Line it with aluminum foil. Very important to line it with aluminum foil. This will help us in extracting the brownies from the pan later after they cool. Spray through. Well, 
with some non-stick cooking spray. Get your spatula. Let's scrape all of this into the paint. Get every little last bit of it that you can. Now, preheated your oven to 350 degrees. I'm hoping. What we're going to do is place the brownies into the oven 350 degrees for exactly 28 minutes. Put them on the top shelf. Set your timer for exactly 28 minutes. When they come out, they'll be perfect. Now, in exactly 28 minutes, when your oven is hollering annoyingly at you to get this stuff out of it, that's when you want to lift them up and let them just set to cool. It will be beautiful thick and chocolate. Don't mess with them at this point. Let them cool for quite a long time. In about an hour or so when they come down to room temperature, what I'll do is I usually cover them with foil and I'll set them in the fridge for a few hours. At that point, I will then show you how to cut them. Because if you try to cut them now, you're just going to make a mess. Trust me, it's not going to work. Okay, so it's been a few hours now, and we now have the brownies out of the fridge, nice and actually cold. What we're going to do now is place a cutting board over the top of the pan, simply flip it over like this, lift the pan off, and then peel away the aluminum foil. To cut the brownies, you're going to want a nice pizza roll. It's the easiest way to do it. If you're more comfortable with a knife, go right ahead. But honestly, I find this easy. Cut them as big or as small as you like. I tend to cut them three cuts top to bottom. And then three cuts. side to side. And you can see how much of a mess it's making on the pizza wheel. Imagine if you had tried to do this when they were right out of the oven. You guys would have a, a pure out mess on your hands. And there we are. We have a nice set of brownies, just thick, fudgy, and wonderful. Nice little crisp top on them. Mmm, just fantastic. And there we have just a beautiful plate of brownies. Really quite simple. Slightly time consuming, but you can be doing other things while they're sitting in the fridge. You don't have to sit there and stare at them.
hope you enjoyed this. Try making this recipe. Really quite simple, really quite inexpensive. 